Long time. The theme is blue tonight, by the way. Nevada white and blue, and Utah State is white and blue. The home whites belong to the Aggies of Utah State. And here's the series history tonight, meeting number 50 between these two teams, and really for the most part, especially lately, dominated by Utah State, and especially here in Logan, 17 and three the mark favoring Utah State. Good to have you on board. We've got a good crowd. Teams fired up. Both could use wins. Especially the Aggies in a big way, and they'll control the tap, and they'll work it left to right. Our vantage point here in the first half. Look for the Aggies to be very deliberate on this first possession to kind of set the tone in their half court execution. The Aggies this season, for the most part, I think speaking generally, a much better defensive team than offensive team. They are a good three point shooting team, however. We'll chronicle that as we proceed tonight. Here's Moore down the lane. Tough shot. He got it to go. Wow, what an acrobatic shot by the young sophomore. Jalen Moore is the only kid to come back in this program to have any experience at all. Uh, only four returning players, the youngest team Stu Morrill's ever had, and he has just gotten better virtually every week. Average five points a game a year ago. And much almost three times that many this year. First possession here for Nevada and a steal. They turn the ball over. The Aggies in their matchup zone, which they'll play after makes. They'll transition back on defense in their man-to-man. -man. And uh, turnovers have been a bugaboo with the Wolfpack all year, coming off a game where they had 19. Talk about West being a good rebound, a good shot blocker too. Got a block shot there of Collette. The two best shot blockers in the league right now with West and Collette matched up with one another. 23 in the shot clock. Moore for three. He can bomb. It's around the rim and down. Wow, what a pretty, pretty jump shot. I tell you, this kid may be the best inside-out player in the league. At 6'8", he's kind of a natural three-man. You see the way he shoots it, but also an outstanding rebounder. and. Just silky smooth on offense. Stu Morrill saying has improved his defense considerably this year as well. Cooper feeds slow left. It's caught by West in traffic. The hook shot makes no good. Not a great start for the Wolfpack, a team that has only shot 38% both in uh, non-conference and conference. And Jalen Moore just having a field day to start the game off with. Got all seven points for Utah State and a quick timeout taken by Nevada. Seven nothing very early going here in Logan. And we talked about how an improved player he is. And let's take a look again, Coach. What? Three baskets, three different ways. The first one, an acrobatic drive. That one, a great pull-up. Sandwich between this great catch and shoot from the three-point line. That is not an easy shot coming off that flare screen at a full gallop. That just shows you, again, his level of versatility. Interesting player, too, from right here in Logan. His father played college basketball at Utah State back in the 80s. Picking up the pace. Average five points a game a year ago. Completely different player. Wolfpack trying to get on the board. Both these teams have been terrific uh, uh, defensive teams. The Wolfpack struggles have come from the offensive game. West with that offensive rebound. The ball stays in the hands of the Wolfpack. Here's West with the offensive rebound. We mentioned earlier, lead the nation in that category. I'm going to show you what kind of offensive rebounder he is in conference play. He's averaging more offensive rebounds than the entire Utah State team. It's interesting, too, with Utah State. Coleman takes a three, and that comes out offensively. Stu Morrill's team's usually very good rebounding teams. This year, they are not. They're getting out-rebounded by six a game. They've gotten better, but there's still nothing to ride home about. They uh, have given up double-digit uh, uh, spankings on the glass on more than one occasion this year, but they have got, just like everything else they've done, they've gotten better at rebounding. There's a good pass and a dunk down low, A.J. West. Poor defense in the middle of that zone by Collette and kind of creating offense by West, getting on the bad side of him on post defense, allowing him a, a lane right through the basket. Took him about three minutes, but 
Wolfpack on the board, and there's a foul along the baseline. Let's go back the other end and watch A.J. West. One of the components of post defense is just stay down between your man and the basket. You see David Collette was everything but between his man and the basket there. Shot clock reset for Utah State. A little trouble on the inbound and handled by Perry. He'll go up top to his point guard, that's Perkins. There is Perkins, number two. Perkins won four double-digit scores in their win at the pit last Saturday. Very off the pick by Moore. Can't find him. Finally gets it to Jalen Moore. So, so 15 to shoot. David Collette into the paint. He's awfully good this way. Couldn't finish. Tipped it in. David Collette is a terrific athlete. Remember, he didn't, well, he's a terrific athlete before he's made two back-to-back -back mistakes defensively. And like I said, just simply creating offense for A.J. West there. He has got to stay between he and the back, him and the basket. That's a pretty simple task, but he's, he's done everything but that the last two possessions. Collette and a kick out this time in the drive and couldn't finish. Chris Smith missed the layup. Stiverins, the center out top. Criswell, Stiverins likes that spot, and he knocks that wing jumper down. Well, how about a 6'11", 235 wing player there, Stiverins is coming off a career-high 10 rebound game at San Jose. Only one or two field goals. Boy, he jumped up and shot that like he meant to. On the baseline, foul against Marquise Coleman. And we got a break in the action. 15 and a half left to go in half number one here in Logan, Utah. Back to the Smith Spectrum after these messages. Mountain West basketball here on Root Sports is brought to you by Connect for Health Colorado. You might not think you need health insurance, we all do. Get yours today at connectforhealthcolorado.com. And by the Sierra Trading Post. Love the deals, live the adventure. Stores in Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, and Nevada. Nevada and Utah State 9-6 early going. The home team, the Aggies with a lead. Jerry Schimmel, Joe Cravens back to Smith Spectrum here on the campus of Utah State. Well, the Aggies had a terrific win at the pit last Saturday where they got down nine early. Colette got two. Uh, fouls had to come out of the game. It looked like it was going to be all New Mexico, and during the Aggies didn't come back. Smith, and he's picked up the foul. Stiverins and West were both there. Oh, terrific end out. Stu Morrill is the master of set plays. This is just another end out of bounds play where it, it's, it's an all day affair preparing to play his team because they have so many sets, so many different end outs. He, again, like I say, coming up here to play was like going to the dentist to get a root canal. It was miserable. Smith makes two. Junior on a Sacramento. There he is, the longtime Aggie head coach, tomorrow. 15 and a half to go first half. And the lead back up now, 11-6, a five-point spread. Begin this game, the Aggies led 7-0. Holman against that zone. Stiverins about 12 feet, knocks it down again. What a nice field by Stiverins getting in a kind of a soft spot in that zone, not quite what's called the short corner, but again, kind of in that scene there. That kid's got a terrific touch. He uh, has only started four games this year, but boy, he can shoot it in. That's a three in the corner, Darius Perkins. Perkins has, is a kid that had a tough adjustment here, not just becoming coming from junior college, coming here. He was a two guard in junior college. And let me tell you, to be a junior college player, to come in to this system is tough enough, but to make a switch in position and play the point guard is a really tough challenge. Tyron Criswell with a three, and the Wolfpack not a good three-point shooting team at all. In fact, they're 25%, but they make their first attempt tonight. Like they were 0 for 9 against San Jose. It's the first time since March of 2005 they had not made at least one three-point shot. The ball and the shot clock will be reset. 14-11 in the first half with Utah State. 
And there's that three-point field goal defense for the Aggies. Another thing that Stu Morrill stresses with his teams is get out there and guard the perimeter, and they have done that for years and years. You know, I've had, I think this is my sixth game I've had the Aggies. In fact, Jerry, you and I were here, and only I think their third or fourth game was against Santa Clara, and it is remarkable where they were in November to where they are right now. We'll be honest, folks, we didn't think that was a real good team. They, no. have, they have turned that around. And this is, and here come the Wolf Pack the other way. And the ball tipped away, but stays in the hands of Nevada. Shot clock not reset, 25 on the clock. Again, turnovers have been a real bugaboo with Nevada all year in critical position. Rodriguez with the left, left handed. Nice pass by West. Nice pass by West there. A little duck in action there by the Wolfpack to get West the ball in the low block and showed his uh, passing prowess, so to speak, out of the low post position. That's a comeback here for the Wolfpack. They were down 7 0 to start. Right at the one. They have not led. Moore, a little push shot from on the baseline. Nine points. Four for four now for Moore, and he has scored in virtually every manner. A three, a runner, a, a, a little teardrop there. Everything 15 a game and nine already tonight. Kick out, Cooper, three, wide open look, and he couldn't get it going. What an offensive rebound. West trying to go back up. Couldn't get that one, Moore clears it. Well, he goes up like a man when he gets to the offensive glass with two hands in a crowd. Good defense there, back the other way. And now come the Wolfpack, and they have a chance to take the lead, or the tie, I should say, with a three. Well, the Aggies, like I said, in man-to-man -man now. They will go on dead balls and made baskets into the zone, but on a miss, they're back into their man-to-man. 15-footer -man. blocked, but that's a foul. D.J. Finner will go to the free throw line. That was on Julian Perry. Perry, the freshman, made a real freshman mistake when the Cardinal sends and defense is fouling a jump shooter. And uh, the staff here at Utah State really liked his defensive effort, but that was not an intelligent defensive play. Julian Perry only had seven points at the pit, but I thought his most outstanding stat in last weekend's game as a pit was as a freshman. He made no turnovers uh, at, at University of New Mexico. And I'm telling you, as a freshman, you go into the pit here, and it is an eye-opening experience. A.J. Fanner trying to hit the second. He does that. He's a good free throw shooter on the season. A.J. West will take a breather. Well, 20 to go first half. A 16-14 lead for the home team. Here's a trap we have not seen. It forces a timeout for Utah State. Really bad place to get the ball versus that press right there across half court in the corner. I mean, that's like catching it in jail and locking yourself in. Uh, the Aggies usually a much more efficient attacking presses than that. And uh, Moore very wisely causes, calls a timeout. And the jailer, the coach didn't, uh, he wasn't real happy with no, his uh, inmate exactly. there either. <laughs> Mountain West basketball, college hoops. Don't miss the next Mountain West basketball game under its sports. San Jose State Spartans head east. They go on the conference leading Wyoming Cowboys in Laramie. The coverage begins Saturday at 4, and it's right here on Root Sports. Well, Nevada coming off a win over at San Jose. And looking at those stats, Jerry, this is unbelievable. They held San Jose State to 30% defense, 30% uh, field goal percentage, out-rebounded them by 18 and almost lost the game. It went right down to the last possession before they pulled it out by three points. Pass to Peyton Moore. And nice speed inside. Elston Jones lays it up left-handed coming off the bench. Elston Jones, a big freshman from Goodyear, Arizona, has appeared in almost every Aggie game this year. He's kind of been a stop-gap guy. Just get in to rest Collette or Moore. Usually doesn't score much, but uh, finds himself Putting one in there. Stevens, Ronnie Stevens has it blocked out of bounds. And a break. 11.48 to go in this first half. Good ball game. It's an 18-14 Utah State lead. Four point Utah State lead in the first half. 18-14 is our score. And uh, Joe, we talked about Jalen Moore and the season he's having. How about the game he's having so far? Nine points already. Well, four for four from the field, one of those being a three-point 
uh, shot made. I used to say he was one of the best young players in the league. I think he's now one of the best players in the league. He's been a top five or six scorer and rebounder virtually all year while playing out of position, showing his versatility on offense tonight. Just a sophomore, Jerry, I, he's going to be a first-team all-league guy before his career is over with. Double figures, 18 of 20 games he has played this year, and he's just about there tonight with nine. We had a, a 17 straight double-figure game streak going and was broken here when they beat Wyoming, held Wyoming to 41 points. But he did a lot in that game other than score points. Great defensive game, great rebounding. He does a little bit of everything. I, again, he's just going to be a great, great Aggie player. Back to man-to-man -man now, Utah State, and it's a foul on the way to the hole. Jojo McClaskin, who's a bench player, been all year for Utah State, picks up the foul. Leads the team in minutes played off the bench, not a very deep uh, Aggie team. Usually Stu Morrow, a pretty, uh, will go eight or nine deep historically, but only four returning players in his entire program this last season. A good offensive rebound there for Ronnie Stevens, and he is fouled as he caught that rebound. One of the reasons that Nevada and A.J. West are such good offensive, and they're a very good offensive rebounding team, and A.J. West uh, individually is because they miss a lot of shots. They're only shooting 38% uh, from the floor and 24% from the three-point line, so there's a lot of opportunities to offensive rebound. You look at the numbers team-wise for Nevada. Like we said, poor offensive team, but they do play good defense. They have some impressive numbers that way. Well, if you don't play good defense in this league, you're not going to be uh, you're going to be on the outside looking in. There's five teams in the league that are holding their opponents to 40 percent or less. I mean, it is a, a, a downright greedy league when it comes to scoring. You can make the argument. You look at the numbers. It's the best defensive league in America, Division One. I'll tell you something else. It is a, a very efficient offensive league too. The Aggies, one of the top teams in the nation in least amount of turnovers and they're only in the top three a lot of teams averaging less than 10 turnovers are right at 10 turnovers this is a terrific drive by the uh junior point guard marquise coleman who started all but one game for the wolf pack this year david collette one time this year back in november of the mountain west player of the week just a freshman murray at utah first ever for a Utah State player. Now remember, Utah State's only been in the league for two years, but he was the first and so far the only player of the week in the Mountain West Conference. Back to Marquise Coleman's drive, Jerry. Some guys, some guards are what you call straight line drivers. They can get there in a hurry, but can't change direction. Marquise Coleman went about six different directions that time getting to the basket. He's a uh, pretty talented young man, the second leading scorer on the team and leads the team in assists. Junior at Los Angeles, a talented player. Eight to four again for Utah State. Now the zone. And a three try. That's up and in. Nice looking jumper by Perez. Michael Perez knocks it down. Michael Perez, one of the few seniors on this team, started 50 straight games after transferring from Texas El Paso. I uh, heard his thumb and has been coming off the bench. I think this is his fifth game coming off the bench. He was the leading scorer returning to this Wolfpack team. And it's been, it's been a tough year again, especially at the offensive end for this team. Throws it home. Great pass by JoJo McGlaston. That's what you call a touch pass. That ball looked like a hot potato in his hands and a great catch by Colette, Colette there. Gosh, this team just gets better each week. I'm telling you, they, I mean, this may be one of Stu Morrow's best coaching jobs. In the years. Oh, great pass again, West with another dunk. Well, you can't, with your zone or man, you just can't let the ball get driven to the paint like that because it breaks you down. Someone's got to come help, and uh, that's what happens. Uh, they forced that help situation, and A.J. West was there to clean it up. Tough 
shot from McGlaston, way off the mark, and the rebound and the chance to take the lead, the Wolfpack. Good move on McGlaston. If he had leaned in, he'd got himself to the free throw line instead of falling away there. Utah State led 7-0 thanks to seven points from Jalen Moore and a nice comeback for the Wolfpack. And a chance to take that lead. 15 to shoot, nine minutes to go first half and stepping out of bounds. But this nice touch pass here by JoJo McGlaston and Colette. They list him at 6'8". I think he's bigger than that, but he's got arms from here to Hoboken and great bounce. And here's the senior Perez penetrating in a real nice little dish there to A.J. West. Must have a nice game. He's got six points and a rebound. So two rebounds. So you look at the Wolfpack record and you say, well, you know, they're having a tough year. They may be thrown in the towel. That, you look at their defensive numbers, and if you've thrown in the towel, you don't hold teams to less than 40% shooting. They are playing very, very hard. Nice job by Colette. I hope that doesn't hurt West in terms of total fouls because he should have let this one go. And I mentioned the two top shot blockers in the Mountain West Conference, West and Colette, and sometimes going for uh, block shots gets you in trouble. Utah State is a team, not a great free throw shooting team, and Clett only 58% makes one of two there. We saw that graphic, 64% for the year in Mountain West Conference play, Jerry. They're 54%, they're second in the league in three-point shooting and the worst free throw shooting team in the league. That may be the reason Stu Morrill's quitting. I tell you, <laughs> yeah. stuff like that drives you crazy as a coach. It makes no sense. No. Good feed in the corner, that's a two try, no good for Rodriguez. Utah State has led from the beginning. Up two now. 8-15 left first half. McGlaston, that's a three. Open look and knocking it down is Chris Smith. Chris Smith has become one of the top three-point shooters in the league. In fact, in league play, he and Moore are shooting 50%. Well, he hit back-to-back -back threes in the pit right before halftime. That really got the Aggies over the hump in Albuquerque last night. West spinning with two on him. He traveled. Well, he made a nice, made an NBA move, but in college, that's traveling. Welcome back. 7.49 left to go. First half in Logan, Utah. Utah State with the lead. You know, the herd is being heard tonight. The crowd, the student section, one of the best in the country here in Logan, Utah. Their team up by five, 7.49 to go in the first half. Time for our Sierra Trading Post leaderboard. Sierra Trading Post. Love the deals, flip the adventure stores in Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, and Nevada. How about the numbers for A.J. West, Coach? Well, it's A.J. West has had a very impressive season, and that is stats overall. In conference season, or conference games only, he's even more impressive. He's averaging almost eight offensive rebounds a game in league play. And to me, Jerry, when your stats go up in league play instead of down, that is a, a, an eye-catching statistic. And I made this uh, statement before, he's averaging more offensive rebounds than the entire Aggie uh, team. That time the Aggies ready for that trapping defense. Pick up a foul. I worked for the late Rick Najeris for four years, and his favorite saying about rebounding was, rebounding is an affair of the heart. And, uh, you know, you talk to some of the great rebounders that played at all levels, and you just, they'll tell you, like Moses Malone, you say, I just go fetch him. <laughs> you just got to go after him. You know, some guys are great rebounders for the ones they go after, they just don't go after enough of them. The guys that go after all of them are the guys that are the great rebounders. Charles Barkley used to say, you know what? The Lord gave me a big rear end. I use it. <laughs> well, he gave me one, too, but I never was much of a rebounder. <laughs> all right, we'll just leave that. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that little, yeah. Six point lead for Utah State. Oh, nice move into the paint. Didn't quite finish. A foul is called. It'll be against. Utah State. I talked about Coleman while ago not being a straight line driver, and I think that was Chriswell that time. Boy, kind of jitter bugging it to the basket. 
Got it through not just a crack, but a couple different cracks to get there. Shot clock reset, and then Nevada reset things mid-court circle with their point guard. Well, that's terrific ball screen defense by the Aggies. The big freshman, Elston Jones, getting out there, really showing great lateral quickness, hard showing that ball screen. Now on the lane finishing again is Marquise Coleman. Coleman. done that a couple times, yeah, Joe. Yeah, what a smart player. Kid has been around for a while. He got his defender leaning toward the ball screen and then took it away. And I, I said, well, go how tough he is to stay in front of because he can switch direction and switch speed so easily. Just to three, Coleman's got the rebound. Six and a half mark first half. Coleman looking for West. They can't get it to him. Rodriguez. This is Eric Cooper, a freshman from Ontario, California, wearing number 21. And Coleman will bring it back up top. Cooper started the last five games. He, in his first start as a freshman at Fresno State, came up with 20 points. And the game after that, 16. So made David Carter look pretty smart getting him into the line. Shot clock getting down. It's to six. Coleman again in the paint. A little stutter step. He missed. It's off his hand out of bounds. Well, here's a great drive by Coleman. Watch him getting his defender leaning into his. Well, Perkins helped him out there. I've got to tell you, by reaching for the ball, if Perkins would have kept his hands to himself, that wouldn't have been so easy. But Coleman on his last drive uh, that he wasn't able to finish, missed the draw and kick in the corner. I'm really surprised at that as good a pass as he is. Oh, look at that play by Elston Jones. Count the basket. That would be a great horse shot <laughs> if you were playing down at the park. Watch big Elston Jones here, the freshman. A kid, like I said, has kind of uh, had a stopgap type role about all, all year. In years past, he would have redshirted this year, but with only four returning players, Stu Morrill needed him to play some minutes. Not a big score. In fact, that's five for him tonight. Uh, 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 really. And, and the Aggies needed some scoring contribution off the bench. Only four points in their last game. The game before that, they got no points off their bench. So four bench points uh, in the last two games. So Elton Jones really helping them tonight offensively. Jones averaging one point a game coming into this one. Lead the Wolfpack back in the free throw line. Five and a half to go in the first half. Big lead of the game has been matched right now at seven. And Cooper can change that. Points and baskets coming a little easier than what I thought they would tonight, Jerry. At the last time out, Nevada shooting 50%, Utah State 64. Uh, not many turnovers. And uh, again, I thought this would be a little bit uh, stingier game, so to speak, than what it's been. Chip West got it back again, back up. He got it blocked, got it again, back up, got a foul. Wow. Oh, does that guy work hard on the glass? Wow, his second jump is so impressive. And with those broad shoulders, he really carves out. A, look at him. Look at him push his man under there. And as I said, all great rebounders go up with two hands and rebound. I was talking to Chris Jones, the Utah State assistant coach, uh, an old buddy of mine that uh, played at University of Utah for Rick Majerus, and I said, how does he get so many offensive rebounds? He said, watch him. He's got a great feel for when his teammates are going to shoot, and he starts either pushing you out or pushing you under uh, and creates great space to rebound front. I see the offensive rebound leaders not even close. AJ West way ahead of everybody. He makes a couple of free throws. Colette is back in for Utah State. Well, in conference play, like I say, he's he's got twice as many as the next guy, which is J.J. Avila from uh, Colorado State. I mean, he's averaging as many in league play as, as the Aggies are and probably a couple of other teams in the league. Some defense now for Nevada. Perkins to Moore. And he passed off. Perry down the lane, kick out, that's a three, it's a block, it's clean, and Nevada's ball. 
Perez in the paint. Chriswell got it blocked by Colette. By himself, front court Smith. Not only a terrific block, but a great outlet pass by Colette there. I keep talking about Jalen Moore getting better each week. This kid here ain't bad either, boy. He, I mean, he, whoever gets this team is going to inherit two terrific young inside players. Watch this block by Colette and keeps the ball in play. And here comes the long outlet pass to Chris Smith. Collette's coming off of back-to-back -back games where he had four blocks in each game at the pit and against Boise State. Six-point spread here. Big Lee's been seven for Utah State, and Nevada's not led in the game. Four and a half to go. First half. Cooper, a stutter step, but he Ooh, banked it in. Great finish. That was not an easy shot by the freshman. I can see now where since he started in his last five games, he's averaging over 14 points, only averaging six for the season. But in five starts, boy, he has really asserted himself offensively. Oh, nearly stolen again by the Wolfpack. The zone has been a little more effective defensively for Nevada. Utah State had trouble attacking the Lobo zone last Saturday. Perkins for three, that will not go, and West clears it. Yeah, he's having kind of the same issue they did at New Mexico. I say they, they're playing a lot east and west and not, not enough north and south. They're not getting the ball in the paint much, just kind of working around the perimeter and having to settle for jump shots. That's where they need to get it. And left to the hole, Wait, late whistle foul. Ronnie Stevens picks up the foul. 3.33 to go in the first half. Utah State with a lead over the Wolfpack. Oh, these guys love their Aggies and Aggie basketball. The herd here at Utah State. The Smith Spectrum on the campus of Utah State. They will really get it going. In fact, uh, they'll start about an hour and a half before the game begins, just giving the other team trouble as they warm up. How about Stu Morrill? We've talked so much about his long coaching career. How about these numbers, Joe? Pretty impressive. Well, the thing that is impressive to me, he has coached for 29 years. He's been a head coach, which as the late, great Charlie Spoonauer used to say, each year in coaching is like living a dog year. It's about to take seven years off your life. 29 years as a head coach, he's had one losing season. Uh, he, he, what he's accomplished is just, just phenomenal. 397 wins here at Utah State, one of 14 active coaches with 600 plus total wins. And one of the top graduation rates in yes. all of the Mountain West Conference. He's, he's done it, uh, there's no saying doing things the right way. He has done it the right way for 29 years. Provo, Utah. Well, that makes one of two. And a five point spread with the home team up. Stu Morrill's an old Zag, played his college yep. basketball for Gonzaga. Zags with one loss still this year. Kentucky won again tonight. They're undefeated. They're an undefeated team. That's a long three. In and out. Crashing the boards, Nevada. That's going to be long to the Wolfpack with effort. Well, Jerry, this, this place has been so tough to win at over the years. Coaches. Got to call it instead of the D spectrum, the D X spectrum, because you could kind of expect to get a pretty good kicking when you came up here. And uh, like I say, it was no fun. Uh, I asked uh, my partner, oh, I think it was last year, hey, did you ever get a win here? It's like, I almost had one one time. Yeah, I got close one time, went home and threw a party. <laughs> I always. And I've told this many times, uh, when I was the coach at Weber State, I beat Stu two out of the first three times we played, and it made him mad. He beat me five straight. So I'm two and six against him, and uh, uh, it only ever wants to talk about the two I beat. You know, it still <laughs> makes sure. him mad. Over sure. 600 wins, and he still takes it out on me all the time. Under three minutes left for staff. Wolfpack came into the ball game with a 7-15 record. There's a turnover there. 3-7 in Mountain West play. 
Boy, terrific ball screen defense there, not only on the ball. If you want to see if a team is good defensively, don't watch the ball, watch away from it. Away from the ball that time, Jalen Rose was like a hawk over there in stands and got his, it caused that turnover. That's going to count the foul. Julian Perry with a chance for three and a great pass. Freshman from McKinney, Texas, hasn't been a big scorer all year, but he's been very dependable. Now remember, this Aggie team returns all five starters next year, and they actually have a pretty good transfer from University of Tulsa setting out that will really help with their inside depth. So whoever comes in here, and I, I hope the administration here gives Tim Durier, the associate head coach, a long look. He has been, he and the rest of the staff, very, very big part of what has happened here over the last decade. Just an outstanding staff there with Stu Moore. Well, folks didn't give the Aggies much of a chance to winning the conference this year. They've surprised a lot of people in a winning record in the Mountain West. And they've lost three overtime yes. games this year. And then given another couple away just by due to inexperience. That's a big basket right there. Knock it down to three, Eric Cooper. They gave him three on that. I thought his feet were on the line, but that was a long way away. Well, five-point game, 36-31, Utah State. That's a three. That's going to go. Like I said, I'm a little surprised at how this game seems to be flowing. Uh, both teams shooting a pretty high percentage, very few turnovers. This kind of offense is kind of coming free and easy for two teams that uh, kind of hang their hat on their defense. There's a turnover. The Aggies force a lot of turnovers. And they don't turn the ball over much themselves as David Carter looks on. One thirty left in the first half. David Carter, as I mentioned earlier, part of the Wolfpack program for 16 years. Played his college basketball at St. Mary. Jalen Moore, after a quick start, slowed down. They're starting to really key on him defensively. West is back in there for Nevada. He gets the ball deep. He's double team. Oh, good pass. That shot is blocked. McGlaston with a block. Nice pass out of post by West, and McGlaston kind of bailed himself out. He was late on that rotation, but was able to get there and block it. West couldn't get it, and it's off his hand. JoJo McGlaston on that last play bails himself out, was actually late getting inside there, late on that rotation, but able to come up with his athleticism, a block, and make himself look good. West couldn't get to that loose ball, but how about a guy 6'9", 235, running and chasing that yeah. down the way he did? It kind of gives you some indication as to how hard he played and how competitive he is. Couldn't agree more. Talented guy at 6'9". Look at, look look at, at him it. sprint the court. Well, he almost got it. He tried to save it to a teammate cutting toward the basket, just couldn't get the handle. You could see his mind thinking, they're going to give me a rebound for yep. this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Most great rebounders are really greedy. They'll, they'll chase them down. They go after all of them. He's got five so far tonight. He's averaging 10 and a half. More than half of his rebounds offensively. That's just amazing. Oh, it really is. It's, it's, I've ne never seen a guy post those type of offensive rebound uh, numbers, maybe ever. Eight point lead. The Aggies biggest. They can tack on. Perry knocks down the three. Perry really feeling it now. Back to back threes for him. Biggest lead of the game at 11 for Utah State. And the Wolf Pack go for one shot. The Aggies second in the league in three-point shooting. Perry 35% himself. Smith and Moore at 50%. Eight seconds. Cooper Stiverins, and that ball is kicked doubly. Five seconds, 5.4 to go. Boy, I watched more away from the ball there. You talk about working to get in position to get an offensive rebound. Criswell heading toward the hole. Got it up and in, and there's a horn. What a 
an athletic play to finish off the half for the Wolfpack of Nevada. 42-33 is our halftime score. Stay tuned after the break. Jenny Kavnar finds the real story behind the herd here in Logan, Utah. It's been a good first half. We'll come back after our halftime show. You're watching Mountain West basketball here on Red Sports 42-33, Utah State at the break. Looking sharp, Len. Who's the lucky lady? I'm going to the bank to discuss a mortgage. <sighs> See, you need a loan, you put on a suit, you go crawling to the bank. This is how I dress to get a mortgage. <laughs> I just go to Lending Tree. I calculate how much home I can afford. I get multiple offers to compare side by side. And the best part is, the banks come crawling to me. Everything you need to get a better mortgage. Clothing optional. Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. Okay. Awkward. 